This is Kenny Tan. Welcome to Real Estate License in 14 Weeks. This is episode 42 of Starting from Zero. We continue to talk about chapter 14. If you like my video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for further notifications, and share this video with your friends. Gross rent multiplier. Gross rent multiplier is the ratio of the sales price of uh, previously sold homes to the gross annual income of the properties such that you accumulate a big database, you come up with an index. So in order to use the gross rent multiplier, you can only apply it to property that has rental income. It's not suitable for properties that are not used for income. So gross rent multiply is just an index. It's simply a number. The formula that is used to, to determine the value of a property based on the gross multiplier, rent multiplier, it's called the GRM, makes use of the annual gross income, not the monthly gross income. Next, we will talk about depreciation. The definition of depreciation is called loss of value due to any cost. That is the definition of depreciation, loss of value due to any cost. It is very different from the depreciation we talked about when we talk about tax advantages, like the depreciation allowance. It's totally different from that. So the first type of depreciation is what we call physical deterioration. Physical deterioration has to do with the physicalness of the property. For example, the first category is wear and tear. Wear and tear refers to a process where a property undergoes deterioration just simply based on frequent use. That's wear and tear. Another category of physical deterioration is uh, negligent care such as deferred maintenance. Deferred maintenance means that the property has not been maintained for quite some time. So it, it means that the maintenance existed, but it was not taken care of, and it just carried on from year to year. That's what we call deferred maintenance. So that's also known as negligent care. So if you have a property that has uh, a very bad roof or bad structure due to poor maintenance, that's also a part of physical deterioration. And a third category of physical deterioration has to do with damages due to termites and dry rot. Another important thing to note about physical deterioration is that it's the type of depreciation that is known as curable. It means that you can correct the problem. So it is important to understand physical deterioration is actually curable because it's part of the exam question. The next type of depreciation is known as functional obsolescence. And it's also curable, just like in the case of physical deterioration. So what are some of the things that causes functional deterior? What are some of the things that causes functional obsolescence? Functional obsolescence has to do with things like poor architectural design, such as a five bedrooms house that has only one garage. That's functional obsolescence. It can also do with things like lack of modern facilities, such as in an area where the temperature is usually very high and there is no air conditioner. The third type of, the third category of functional obsolescence has to do with changes in architectural style, construction materials. Sometimes a, a, a different material is more popular now than the old material that was used. For example, these days we don't use asbestos for construction, whereas the old days, asbestos was popular. So that is some form of functional obsolescence. The third type of depreciation is known as economic obsolescence. Economic obsolescence has nothing to do with the physicalness of the building, like in physical deterioration or functional obsolescence. It has more to do with uh, changes in the environment. I'll give you an example. The first category of economic obsolescence is known as misplaced improvement. What is misplaced improvement? A misplaced improvement may, be, may have nothing to do with the physical deterioration. The improvement may have been built 
many years ago when it was built it was okay it was conforming to the old uh, ordinance but since the zoning code has changed whatever misplay whatever uh, improvement that was already there is no longer permitted by the city for example or permitted by the local government such that this improvement becomes a misplaced improvement the second category of economic obsolescence has to do with zoning and legislative changes zoning and legislative changes i'll give you an example in fact this is one of the dre exam questions is that sometimes airplanes routes are changed as you know when airplane flies in the sky they use certain routes now presently perhaps your house is not under the airplane route and suddenly the government changes the rule and forces the airplane to fly over your house instead now because of the airplane flying over your house due to the reassignment of the route it actually causes noise problem to your house so your house will suffer from what we call an economic of solace and remember this is an exam question the third category of economic obsolescence has to do with depression and unemployment. Uh, if you recall the example involving Detroit, Detroit at one time was going such a was going through such a big economic depression, and there's a, a lot of unemployment in the area that causes the property value to drop. And now that's what we call economic obsolescence. Let's talk about architecture style. Look down on your book, you'll be able to see four to five different architectural styles. You are not required to remember every single one of them, but there is an architectural style that you have to remember, and that will be the California Ranch right at the bottom of the page. It is commonly tested in the DIE exam questions about the California Ranch style. They might not show you a picture of the house uh, showing the architectural style, but they may ask you a question about which of the following architectural style will give you uh, the best lighting, for example. Okay, remember, if you don't know what the answer is, pick uh, this uh, California Ranch. So remember what California Ranch looks like. Now let's go over construction terms. Let's look at your book. At the top picture, you will see a foundation. For exam purposes, you need to see, you need to know what the foundation looks like. At the bottom of it, on the right hand side, you see footing, you see foundation, and then you see the floor joists, and of course, the mud seal. You gotta remember what mud seal looks like. And the most important part is the middle part of the page where it's showing the crawl space. An exam question about the crawl space will be about the dimensions. A crawl space is just an open, a gap between the base of the floor and the foundation of the building. And that's a crawl space. Now, underneath the crawl space, you may have cables, dead animals, and things like that. So oftentimes, when an inspector do a home inspection, they will actually go down. They actually crawl into the crawl space to see if there are any foundation issues or any plumbing problem, leaks, and things like that. Now, the exam question that shows up in DIE exam is to, has to do with the crawl space opening. The, the minimum opening is 18 inches by 18 inches. Minimum height of the crawl space for FHA is 18 inches. That means that if you're applying for an FHA loan, the crawl space needs to have an 18 inch opening. If you look further down on the same page, you will see the shape of the roof. And then you see that the wood planks that run diagonally from the ridge, which is the top part of the roof, uh, to the base of the roof, and those uh, pieces of wood are known as rafters. In the DI exam, you're constantly tested on the roof style. And there are several roof styles in the book. And one of the most common roof style is called the hip. So you need to go back to the diagram that shows the different roof style that I showed you earlier. And the hip is very easy to recognize because there are four sides and it slopes 
on four sides. So remember, a hip style, the roof slopes on four sides. There are some definitions that they'll test you on concerning construction. First definition is what we call backfill. Now, if you dig a hole in the ground, and if that hole is no longer needed, the previously excavated material would have to replace with new material to fill out the hole. The materials that goes into the hole to replace the previously excavated material is what we call backfill. Say for example, a homeowner has a swimming pool in his backyard. Now let's say for example, he no longer wants a swimming pool. So the swimming pool obviously would have to have backfill. Bearing wall is a wall or partition that actually transfers the load from the top of the building to the foundation in addition to its own weight. That's why we call it the bearing wall. Now, let's say for example, you live in an apartment uh, complex or you live in a condominium. Generally speaking, the owner is responsible for the airspace. When you bought a condo, you bought an airspace. However, some things are to be maintained or over. However, some things are to be maintained by the association, such as bearing wall. Sometimes there are bearing walls inside your condominium. So before you can cut a hole inside the bearing wall, you need permission from the HOA. If you didn't get permission, you might get into trouble with the HOA. The reason is when you cut a hole in the bearing wall, you weaken the structure of the building. BTU, BTU is the amount of heat required to heat one pound of water by one degree Fahrenheit. Commercial acre, commercial acre is one acre of newly subdivided land after you have subtracted all of the improvements. Commercial acre, commercial acre is the area remaining from an acre of newly subdivided land after subtracting streets, curbs, and sidewalks. So in other words, a commercial acre is actually less than one acre. What is energy efficiency rating, otherwise known as EER? It is a rating system for appliances whereby the higher the rating, the greater the efficiency is. What is a party wall? If you have two neighbors that share a wall between them and that wall is located on the property line, we call that a party wall. What is a plot plan? A plot plan is a plan that is drawn to scale that show the lot dimensions and the placement of improvements around the lot. What is R value? R value is a rating system to rate the effectiveness of the insulation materials against the flow of heat. Now in the exam, this is very important. You gotta remember this. Uh, at, do you, at the DIE exam, one question that frequently shows up in the exam is as follows. What are the three things that a builder must disclose to a new buyer when they sell a new home to a buyer? The three things are the R value, type of insulation, and thickness of insulation. What is rehabilitation? It is the restoration of a property to its satisfactory condition without changing the plan, form, and architectural style. What is stud? Stud is simply vertical timbers within the wall. And most of the time, TVs are anchored to studs. If TVs are not anchored to stud, the TV will fall down. This is the end of episode 42 of Starting From Zero. See you next time.